Uh, we'll see how that plays out. 23 minutes to news time. Wow, I feel good. And now, health and nutrition. So good, so good, I got to hear Very popular segment the last time we got together with Nigel Hope. Um, and it's no secret that as we get older, we have problems with our hips and our knees, etc., etc. They wear out. And while our genetics play some role, there are plenty of things we can do to prevent severe damage in our older years. And this is what we're all about this afternoon. Some tips, some advice on what you do with your weight. If you've got a really crook hip, what should your weight be? General health, the sport we play, the exercise you do. And it's all got an influence on the pressure and the pain that we receive via the hips and the knees. So what can we do to take care of our bones and joints? And what should we be doing if the pain's stopping us from enjoying everyday activities? Sydney knee and hip surgeon, Associate Professor Nigel Hope, is back in the studio this afternoon and quite happy to take your calls as well, but you'll need to get in quick based on how popular he was last time he was here. 131873 is the telephone number. Nigel, thank you very much for coming in. Oh, terrific. Chris, great to be back, mate. Yeah, I, I often talk about uh, how the older we get, the more pain we seem to have and, and how do we deal with the pain. Sometimes, though, we try and mask the pain with drugs when there are things we can do to prevent the pain in the first place, right? Yeah, absolutely, Chris. But, you know, simple analgesics like paracetamol is absolutely fine to take if you're, you know, you're having pain at night or, say, pain when you're sitting. But even better than that is, you know, preventing the pain coming on. And one of the things you can do is, you know, you may or may not know that one kilo of weight on your backside is four kilos of weight on your knee or hip. So one kilo on your backside, four kilos on your knee or your hip. Yes, and that's right. p- particularly when you're going up and down stairs. So if you can knock off even a little bit of weight, that'll have a huge effect on the cartilage in your hip or knee. Okay. On yeah. the subject of exercise, and we'll talk more about this, um, we spoke last time you were in about strengthening the core. James from Borkham Hills has a question for you on that. Go ahead, James. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for taking the call, Doctor. Pleasure. Uh, look, I'm currently um, need, in need of a hip replacement. I've got bad osteoarthritis and a cyst in my hip. Um, I was about 97 kilos. I'm down to about 92 now in the last three months. The pain has gotten a lot better than what it was. The question is, will the pain completely go away if I keep losing weight um, or will it still be there, the small pain that I have now? Mate, that's a million-dollar question, an excellent question. Just keep losing the weight until you're down to your normal body mass index and then have a look at it. Um, certainly, you know, you get a four times, uh, fourfold uh, benefit from every one kilo of weight loss. It's just a terrific way to go. Keep yeah, losing it, James. Yeah, no, look, it definitely feels 80% better than it did four months ago. Uh, the knee is compensating a little bit and copping a bit of the, um, the pain at the moment. So I think it's just about strengthening the core and every part of your body that needs strengthening because everything from the waist down as you get older, the impact gets harder and we need to lose the weight, obviously. So, yeah. Yeah, mate, you're absolutely correct, though. But weight loss, in addition to appropriate physiotherapy, will be a fantastic addition to your analgesia or your pain control regime. In fact, the core just drives everything. It drives, you know, how you're transferring weight into both hips and the knee. And if you can get hold of a good physiotherapist and get your core going, it'll make a huge difference. Good on you. Thank you for your call, James. Yep. Thank you. Thank All right. Just in terms of the, the pressure on your hips, a, a lot of podiatrists would argue that it's often the way you walk that needs correcting, which could take a hell of a lot of pressure off the way your knees carry your weight um what's the truth in that sure no there's look you can look from the bottom down bottom up or the top down so if you look from the bottom up of course it's how your your foot's placed on the ground which determines the stress going through your knee and your hip Mm -hmm. but if when you look from the top down it's how you hold your core that also determines the same thing so you want a weight bearing line going through middle of hip middle of knee middle of foot and if there's any problem at any of those areas, correcting that area will fix the whole problem. So okay. your foot can, you know, fix your hip. What about the difficulty of exercising? If you've got a crook knee, if you've got a crook hip, a lot of people say, oh, I can't get out. You know, I can't do the block like I used to. I can't um, get up to the 
to the local village and, and walk, etc. What yeah. do you advise? Look, the thing is, why are you exercising? Well, you're exercising probably to lose weight. And the most important thing about weight loss is it's 95% diet. It's 5% exercise. So patients come in and say, Doc, my knee hurts. I can't exercise. I'm putting on weight. So you get into this vicious cycle. So dietary advice is critical um, to get that weight off to improve your function. Okay. NigelHope.com.au. He's happy to take your calls this afternoon. One three one eight seven three. Steve, go right ahead. Oh, good afternoon, Chris. Doctor, how are you? Hi. Good, mate. Doctor, I, I'm in the late 50s. Um, I'm pretty active. I don't have any aches or pain. However, I just take a fish oil supplement every day. I don't know why. I just take because it... You don't know why? I don't know why. You're in good it's company, good. mate. Well, look, uh, there's limited ev- evidence to suggest that fish oil does anything magic, but if you feel that you taking it, you know, it's decreasing your pain, then stay on it. The one thing you've got to realise is it, make, it can reduce your blood... Uh, the blood clotting properties, so it can make you bleed, if you like. So just be careful taking fish oil with aspirin or other anti-inflammatories. Right, thank you. Good on you, Steve. Thank you very much for your call. When do you know that it might be time to consider surgery? When is it about the degree of pain that you receive? Or should you wait until you get proper advice? Well, mate, it's, it's multifactorial. It's pain. And, you know, there was the um, Scott Muller, Shane Warren thing in 99, right? Can't bowl, can't throw. Mm. But let's change it to can't sleep, can't sit. So if you can't sleep and the pain's waking you up and you can't sit to watch a movie, you've got a problem. So I think it's wise to seek advice. That's one thing. And the other thing is, you know, if you're getting more bow-legged or you can't straighten your knee out properly, definitely seek advice. Right. So when you're getting more bow-legged, it's interesting. Like most people wouldn't know when their body is changing shape or the way they're walking is different to the way they used to walk. Yeah. And it's something that only a a professional can determine, I guess. Or or your wife. Yeah, (laughs) right, or your wife. (laughs) The ultimate professional. Simo, go ahead. Nigel's listening. Good afternoon, guys. Uh, Broker broker Patella in 1991 had it uh, it put back together, uh, lost the desire for exercise, eventually blew out to 127 kilos, couldn't do my shoelaces up, had to assist myself getting up and down stairs, made the decision that it all starts in the kitchen, started riding again, got back on the bike, started riding with a club, a couple of magic things happened, now down to 97, 98. Oh, terrific. No knee pain going up and down stairs. In fact, I bound up and down the things. And, um, you know, the you, you, you just cannot underestimate... Um, the, the effect that weight loss has. The other thing is, Doc, the other thing I wanted to ask you, with cycling, because you're exercising those three major muscles, it seems to have the effect of aligning the patella properly as it tracks through the femur again. Yeah, mate, you've got a good knowledge of what's happening here. That's exactly what happens. And the beauty of cycling is it's non-impact, so it's a smooth uh, sort of action, so you're not getting that pounding that you get on the pavement. And that's yeah. one other thing you can avoid is the road running. Yeah, well, I'm 63 now, and um, I'm cycling better than I was when I was in my 40s, so happy as. Mate, well you, done. You only sound 40. Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> you, what, what about swimming? Oh, well, that's the ultimate. Of course, that's the ultimate in um, you know, non-load-bearing, non-impact loading exercise. In fact, and if you can't swim, say you've got a shoulder problem, you can pool walk. So you get in the pool and just go up and down at a, at a nice, uh, nice level, maybe up to your chest. That's a terrific way of exercising when you've got a bit of joint pain. Yeah, right. Okay, and I guess the, the cold water too is helpful. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, dunking yourself in the cold water, you see all the, um, the swimmers early morning in the harbour pools, you know, dunking themselves, and I think that makes a lot of difference to the amount of inflammation in the joints. Yeah, right. Okay, 131873, the telephone number. Nigel Hope, Associate Professor, here to take your calls. Dwayne, go right ahead. Hi, good day. How are you going? Great yeah, to go. Excellent. Thank I'm, you. I'm really struggling when you were saying pain and sleeping in my shoulders. Really bad. I went and saw a specialist, got a bit of osteoarthritis, and he just wanted to put me under the knife straight away. But I'm only 54, and I'm a bit worried it's going to wear out too quick. Well, the whole idea of you know, having a joint replacement is that the cartilage is worn out already and the only way to help your pain is to replace that cartilage with something new. So if you're you're happy with the opinion, 
you know you can go with it otherwise plenty of people can get second opinions there's no problem with that and certainly uh you know that can be a good way to go if you get a little confused what do you think about glucosamine glucosamine very interesting yeah. topic um i had the opportunity of doing a PhD in the laboratories at North Shore Hospital and I've worked on glucosamine and look it does there is a little evidence to say that it reduces pain and improves range of motion in early osteoarthritis so that's when you don't have any arthritic changes on the x-ray and it may be worthwhile taking a course for a couple of months but you don't go on it forever. What do you think about chiropractors would they be able to help this problem that I've got um, by strengthening the muscles or something around the shoulder or well, look, everything, you know, the hip bone's connected to the knee bone, right? So everything is connected to everything else. And if you have a spinal problem, that can be helped with chiropractic. That will more well align, you know, your shoulder girdle, and that can help. But if the problem's in the cartilage in your shoulder joint, addressing a different problem won't help you. Okay, thank you so much. Cheers, Good on mate. you, Dwayne. There you go, three questions well answered with... Nigel Hope in the studio. We've got a short amount of time left with Associate Professor Nigel Hope. One three one eight seven three. You're listening to the Chris Smith Show on Two GB. Thanks to Proud Furniture. Buy a Proud Furniture Lounge. Buy Australian made quality and only buy once. Seven and a half minutes to news time. I've got Associate Professor Nigel Hope in the studio taking your calls. A Sydney knee and hip surgeon. John, go right ahead. Hi, hi, fellas. Um, Chris, look, I really appreciate your show, mate. I enjoy it on the way home. But, um, Very kind. I really, don't, I really don't have a question, but I had about five years ago, I had my both knee bilateral knee replacement done because I had bone on bone at the time. Ooh, yeah. I was in a lot of pain, and I got to the point that I was desperate to get something done. I seek second opinion. Now, five years on... I'm rock and rolling. That's a 50, 60 style rock and rolling. I'm walking up and down the stairs without any issues and I'm walking around and I'm enjoying life now. Mate, that's terrific. And that's what happens in over 90% of the, the cases. And really, thanks for sharing that with us. And life's different, yeah, I bet, for you now, John. So, look, I just wanted to share it to the, um, the listeners out there. If they're in pain, get something done, honestly. It's a, it's a good quality of life afterwards. Great stuff. Good to hear, John. Good to hear. It's a pretty amazing and significant surgery, given the fact that he's had both done. Yeah, in, indeed. And, you know, one, one thing is when you've got bilateral or both knee osteoarthritis, which one are you going to walk on? Mm. So you've got no choice, really. Yeah, and it's exactly. very painful, very difficult. Yeah. Um, obviously, a, a long rehabilitation. Well, it's not that much longer than having a single knee done. Um, but more know, awkward. It, 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 it does take a little longer, okay. but it's a very successful way of doing it. Frank, go ahead. Nigel is listening. Hi, my name is Frank. I'm calling about I've got a rot- rotary cuff problem. I've, I've been to the physio for a couple of months, and I've had X-ray, and it says it's uh, bursitis, and he's given me exercise to do, and nothing works, and I can't bend my arm, uh, you know, just trying to pick up food from with the tongs and it hurts and um, I was wondering if if a cortisone injection works do they work I've never had anything like that because I do a lot of push-ups and now I can't do any yeah look I understand you need to seek an opinion from a shoulder surgeon an orthopedic shoulder surgeon and really find out what the diagnosis is and then you can find out if a cortisone injection will work but my doctor said that's what will work I don't know well Certainly, it ha- there is a. On occasion, cortisone can work, but it's not a fix forever. So you really need to find out what the diagnosis is, what the problem is, and if there's a mechanical problem like your rotator cuff's torn off the bone. No, it- it's not. It's only I've got a little tear. Okay, well. You know, cortisone may have a place in treatment of that, but I can't really give you a specific advice because, you know, I'm not running orthopedic outpatients here at the moment, so it's it's a little difficult. But uh, maybe go back, talk to your GP more. Another opinion's always helpful. Well, maybe a referral to go to a specialist. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Good on you, Frank. Good luck. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a painful thing in your shoulder. I've fallen off a motorcycle once, and I get it occasionally on the right-hand shoulder. But if you are a hip and knee surgeon, you're not a soldier. 
a so- shoulder surgeon, yeah, are you? Yeah, indeed, that's yeah. exactly right. And we we do try to specialise in areas, and shoulders are a, you know, a specialty of their own. They're very difficult. Great stuff. Thank you for coming in today. Go to the website if you want more information from the Associate Professor Nigel Hope, nigelhope.com.au. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Chris.